Hey everyone, Magic Renner here. Thought I'd do a little uh, recap of the Olympics as a whole, just to give my kind of thoughts on the Olympics and what it was all about. Firstly, um, I love watching Olympics. I love watching athletes, whether it's judo, high jump, boxing, whatever it is, just trying to achieve their dream and fighting really hard. I think it's something really inspirational about it, whether they come first or nothing, or but just about giving it their absolute all is um, is just really inspiring for me. So um, well done to everyone that competed at the Olympics in all sports. I thought I want to turn my yeah, attention to judo. What was it? There's been a lot of complaints online, anti-IGF complaints and that sort of stuff. But I think it's not, uh, it's kind of a, a mixture of the, I, the judo rules versus athletes' mindsets and stuff like that. So it's kind of, there's no one thing to blame to what judo looks like now, but um, there's a, it's a mixture of rules, athlete mindsets, grip fighting, time limits, the power of shidos and things like that. So it, and that's the, what we had at the Olympics this year. I remember growing up, uh, maybe from the 2000s onwards, when uh, Taekwondo was at the Olympics, and people, Taekwondo players would say, oh, Olympic Taekwondo is the worst. And I remember thinking, Olympic, but it's the Olympics. How can the Olympic Taekwondo be the worst? Um, and they say, oh, it's watered down, blah, blah, blah. And by going, but judo's not. Judo, we've got leg grabs, we've got this, we've got that, and it's amazing. But it seems to me now there's a lot of people saying the Olympic judo is not real judo. And so that really heartbreaks for me because we're, you know, uh, because we want judo to be the best, not a watered-down version of what we have So at the moment. So um, I guess I want to see people, judo players, saying, man, the Olympic judo is the best. And so how do we get that? I don't know. It's a mixture between rules, athlete mindsets of trying to win by throws rather than penalties and all the rest of it. Um, so here are some insights I thought. Firstly, someone commented online that the uh, judo is actually for the athletes. It's not for spectators. You know, in the in UFC where they're like, hey man, if you don't knock people out, if you're not exciting, then you don't get matches. Judo's not like that. Athletes don't care whether they are entertaining for me as a spectator. They have a goal, which is to win, and that's what they want to do. And they'll do that any way possible. So judo's not really a spectator sport. And I think changing the... And it is, it should be. Big throws and all the rest of it. But an athlete's job is not to entertain me. Their job is to win. Um, and so we're MMA. It's more about entertainment and the show and all the rest of it. Uh, and judo's just not like that. So I think, um, yeah. And I'd love to hear your comments on, on all my points that I have in my video as well. Just leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of, of all of it. Now, firstly, here are some things I think you need to change. A four minute time limit. Four minutes is not long, okay? When I do jiu-jitsu comps, I'm a black belt. Black belts fight for 10 minutes in IBJJF. At the local comps that I have here in my state, black belts fight for five minutes. Five minutes. Do you know how hard it is to pass a black belt's guard in five minutes? It is really, really hard. And then you look at a four minute judo match. In a four minute judo match, I'm meant to get a top level judoka who's fit and strong and powerful and they're good at judo and they're good at grip fighting and I have to grab them and throw them in four minutes. That's really, really hard. It's really hard because no one gets tired. I saw hardly any athletes with their hands on their knees puffing and, and being really, really tired, even in the golden scores. These athletes are fit as, strong as, with great grip fighting and great defense and I'm meant to throw them in four minutes. Really, really difficult. And we saw that at the Tokyo Olympics, just on some things I think about. I saw Takato fighting in his first few rounds against lower countries. Like it, it could have been Yemen, Morocco, something like that. And Takato went and got three penalties on them. And I'm like, this is Takato, multiple time world champion, Olympics gold medalist. And he can't, he's, he can't even throw these guys in four minutes with, with any of his techniques. It's because four minutes is not long. Okay, so I think if we can extend the, um, the, the matches to six minutes, then we'll actually see some more judo throws because firstly, people may get tired, maybe get tired, but it's actually gonna allow the athletes a longer time to actually set up their techniques and throw. For example, in jiu-jitsu, if you said, Matt, if you're gonna pass this person's guard, if you don't make something happen in 30 seconds, I'll give you a penalty. I want you know how hard it is to pass someone's guard in 30 seconds? It takes me ages to pass their guard. And so I'm getting penalized, but it's, I'm, I'm trying but they're defending and, and, and so it's, it's a lot harder to make something happen. So for example, someone gets a penalty for non-combativity. They now have 20 to 30 seconds to make something happen before they get another penalty. Do you know how hard that is to do as an athlete? To grab my opponent, set them up and make something happen in 30 seconds? It's, it's too hard. They're too good. So I think extending the time limit will then allow, and then extending the gap of when athletes will get penalties will allow more throws to happen. So that's my first one, I think, that. Um, secondly, I have here, oh, here's another one, I think. So there's a lot of golden scores. There's a lot of golden scores. I, I, actually, yeah, I'll talk about this one. So it takes a long time to make something happen. That's the first one. Second one, 
in wrestling for a little while, wrestling had a lot of changes as well. And one of them they had was last score wins. So if you throw me for Wazari, and then with 10 seconds to go, I throw you for Wazari, I win. Last score wins. But now what we have is it goes golden score. And so in wrestling, it'll stop those athletes. What we see at the Olympics now, we see an athlete get an early score, and then they dog it for four minutes and they win on two penalties. They get two penalties, we've got a Wazari, so they win. Um, or we see athletes spamming drop COE or, or in the lightweights, the drop Tomonagi, drop Tomonagi, 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 no penalties. And then, they, and then the other guy gets a penalty for not attacking. And then um, they do that the entire match. And before you know it, the other guy gets DQ'd uh, and, um, and they can't even get an attack in because the person's dropping all the time. Um, and so that happened in the Garba Hashimoto match. Garba just stiff arm one hand, drops the drops the drops the and Hashimoto couldn't get two hands on. And then he would stiff arm right hand and do drops and left hand and do drops and Hashimoto couldn't get two hands on and couldn't throw him at all. And it was great tactics. But for a spectator, it was penalties, there was no throws happening, it was boring. And so, um, for me anyway, this is all just what my, my thoughts. So I think firstly, last score wins will stop golden score matches happening. That's an interesting idea. Secondly, what might also help stop golden scores happening is bring Yukos back. And now we have Yukos and Wazaris all leaking Wazaris, which is um, making golden scores happen. If you have a Yuko, now golden scores won't happen anymore. It also means if I throw you for two Yukos, I have to keep attacking. You know, my coach was saying the other day, if I throw you for three Cokers in the old rules, I have no any one the match. I have to keep attacking because any other score higher than a Coker, you'll win. So I can't dog a match on Cokers. I have to keep working, keep working. So I think another one is bring back Yukos. It, yes, it's more um, confusing for spectators, but guess what? The commentators should be constantly telling the crowd and the people watching how to win judo matches. And so they're uh, telling people how to win. Well, then... Uh, make it easier for people to understand when they watch judo. So bring back Yugos, maybe have last score wins. Now, drop throws. There was in the lightweight division, 66 and 60s, endless drop Cianagis and terrible drop Cianagis. Get out of jail free cards. Because it's an attack, they're not getting penalized. And so it's really, really sad to see an athlete pushing forward, getting two hands on, person drops. Athlete pushing forward, get two hands on, athlete drops. And then the person pushing forward, gets a penalty because I haven't attacked. It's like, well, I can't attack because they're dropping on the ground all the time. So I think we need to start looking at the intent of the drops. Are they just dropping because the other person's got a good grip? Are they dropping because it's a legitimate attack? So I think that's really important to look at. And that's very subjective from referee to referee, which makes it very interesting. Another one, uh, we shido for non-combativity in Tachiwaza, but in Nerwaza, we don't shido for non-combativity. It just doesn't make sense in a self, we market judo as self-defense, and then in our kids and teenage classes, we're teaching them to lay on their stomach with like this. And, and you're like, well, you're not teaching self-defense. You're teaching sport judo. And um, sport judo came from sam samurais. And samurais didn't lay on their stomach and like do this. They turned around and faced their opponents and all the rest of it. So we need to bring back either a hold down. I've said this for years now. If you're on your stomach and I have hooks in and your belly down with hooks in, like a jiu-jitsu back take, that should be a hold down. That is more powerful than any other hold down. It's, it's more powerful than all hold downs because you probably can't get out. If we make that a rule, if you lay on your stomach and I get two hooks in, that's a hold down, you now have to turn and face me. And now I can pass your guard and hold you down or arm by you or strangle you. So um, I think first, if you're laying on your stomach and not attacking, you should get a penalty. And that will then change it. And what's going to happen then is the person that's attacking will throw you, you land on your stomach, and if you're defending, well, you're going to get a penalty. So it's actually going to reward throwing techniques, and it may actually reward just dragging them to the ground. Uh, as well, because athletes are going to play the rules, but it's going to help give a broader view of what judo is and what self-defense is, uh, and also create more opportunities on the ground. I think that's really important. One of my other coaches also mentioned two Olympics ago, there should be almost like a shot clock in, in on the ground. Once it goes to the ground, there's like a, maybe a four or five minute match or a six minute match. Um, and when it goes to the ground, there's like an, an, an additional 25 second shot clock on top of the normal clock which will then start, so you've got 25 seconds to make something happen. If you don't make something happen, maybe you get penalised. I don't know, but something to kind of, what separates judo from wrestling is obviously the style of, of play, but also arm bars and strangles. And we're just not seeing that at all. We're seeing athletes not even, and as an athlete, why would I engage on the ground? It is so hard. If you're an elite level athlete and you're laying on your tummy like this with your arms in tight and your neck defended, it is so hard to arm bar you and strangle you when you're like that, especially with this rule. 
where athletes now are doing turtle and they're ducking the gi across their face. So when you go to strangle me, referee says, stop. And you're like, well, hang on a minute. They're putting themselves there so I can't attack them. And you say, stop. That's ridiculous. If they, in, in, in jiu-jitsu, if this happens, well, I'll just rip your face off. And you, now I don't want that to be the case, but if you're doing this and I strangle you across your face, you should get a shido because you're actually playing the rules to allow me to stand up. You're defending your butt off. You are defending, completely not attacking, and the referee is on your side. We stand them up and reset. At Jiu Jitsu, if I do that, the guy will go, no worries, mate, see you later to your teeth. And so I can't do that. I have to actually develop an offensive game from my stomach, which is to turn and face. And then half guard will happen and, and things like that. So I think um, penalizing that, stopping, um, yeah, referees being on the uh, defender side by, um, by um, stopping that happening. And the last one, which is I do support the head dive rule, okay? Because we don't want kids bouncing on their heads as teenagers. But also the head dive rule has now removed a lot of Uchimata attacks. If I do an Uchimata and you push me on my head, I get disqualified. So why would I do an Uchimata? I, I, I'm just not going to bother. Because I don't, why would I do an attack that's going to risk me getting DQ'd? I'd rather just do a drop COE, a Tomonagi, a Sumigeish, and rack up penalties because they're so powerful. So there are some of my thoughts of the Olympics this year. Um, I did love watching the Olympics. Some of the matches were just super frustrating. Um, but as athletes, we are always going to play the rules. We're always going to go, what are the rules? And then work using the rules to our advantage. As a player, I often use penalties to win matches. I'm not slagging anyone that doesn't. I'm just saying when that becomes a very, very good way of win matches, it becomes almost like not what judo is all about. I watched Travis Stevens versus Oli Bushoff the other day from in 2012. It was a five minute, five or four minute, five minute match, or a four minute match with a golden score, not one penalty. I watched one of my matches from 2010. It was a four minute, uh, three and a half, four minute match, not one penalty. So what's changed between then and now, as a, a referee's pinging people earlier, or back then, are we because it's a longer match? Are we allowing? the athletes to play a little bit more. But all I know is um, athletes now and the grip fighting strategies are unbelievable now. And we're not allowing, the rules are almost shortening the time and for athletes to attack. And when athletes now, the grip fighting is on a whole nother level. Their athletes are a whole nother level. And so we need to bring that in consideration. One problem with four or five or, five or six minute matches is local tournaments are gonna go a lot longer because matches are longer, but then they will also not go to golden score. So there's an element of that as well. So let me know your comments in the uh, comment section and um, I can even answer some of your questions or but let me know your comments, what you think. Have a great week and I'll talk soon. Bye-bye.